second mode of nutrition which organisms use to obtain food is known as heterotrophic nutrition. Hetero means different, wherein organisms are dependent on other organisms either living or dead. So they obtain their food from other organisms. So heterotrophic nutrition can be further studied under four heads parasitic nutrition para means other site means place so these are the organisms which are living inside other organisms or upon the organisms to obtain their food so such an organism is known as a parasite and the organism from which these organisms obtain the food are called as a host for example lice virus ticks cascuta is a plant okay for example lice the that are present in the scalp of the head so they are present outside the body so we are the host this is the parasite virus virus is usually present inside the body so once again it is the parasite we are the host so it obtains all the nutrients directly from the host so here the host is actually a living organism it is alive very important symbiotic bios means life sim means together so it is a type of organization where two organisms are dependent on each other for their food example is lichen where it is a association of a algae and a fungus the fungus provides water and also protection for the algae the algae in turn produces food which is used by the fungus so both are dependent on each other for their food the third type of nutrition heterotrophic nutrition is called as saprotrophic form of nutrition example fungus in saprotrophic mode of nutrition the fungus obtain organic material from outside in this case obtained from dead plants and animals it is directly obtained so you can see mushroom growing in moist soil from the dead leaves etc so fungus obtain nutrition from dead and decaying organic matter and the last mode of nutrition is known as holozoic mode zoa means animals so these are animals which obtain the food as a whole the food is first taken in as a whole and then it is broken down digested inside the body so example human beings we take the food and digestion takes place inside amoeba amoeba also obtains its food directly and then it is broken down inside the cell so these are the different modes of heterotrophic nutrition so we will discuss heterotrophic mode in amoeba in paramecium which are unicellular organisms then we will discuss about the mode of nutrition in human beings in detail amoeba is a unicellular eukaryotic organism the entire cell is in contact with the outside environment amoeba has special finger like projections structures called as pseudopodia when food is available in the outside environment the finger like projections they engulf the food particle inside a food vacuole the food vacuole is then taken inside the cell where using certain enzymes the food is broken down and the nutrients will then diffuse into the cytoplasm the waste products are then 
thrown outside into the environment which is called as holozoic mode of nutrition amoeba is shapeless therefore it does not have a particular spot where food enters whereas on the other hand we have paramecium it is also unicellular living in water but in paramecium there is a specific spot from where food enters this is called as the oral groove how is food taken near this spot this is happening because of the structures called as cilia the paramecium body is entirely covered by hair like structures called as cilia these cilia they beat rhythmically in water because of which a water current is created this water current will help in bringing the food near the oral groove from where it is ingested and inside the food vacuole it is digested essential nutrients are diffused into the cytoplasm and waste products are thrown out so that is about nutrition in amoeba and paramecia let us now discuss how this process takes place in human beings nutrition in human beings which can be divided into five simple steps ingestion that is the process of consuming the food or taking in the food into the mouth or the oral cavity once ingestion is done it is quickly followed by digestion digestion is the process where large complex molecules of food are broken down into simple and small molecules this is very important because if the molecules are large they cannot be absorbed by the cells so the food is broken down into simple organic molecules how with the help of substances called as enzymes enzymes are biological catalysts which help in breaking down complex organic molecules into simple absorbable substances after digestion absorption takes place that is the broken down molecules are absorbed these molecules are then sent to different parts of the body with the help of blood where the cells will take them and they will use them in building new molecules such as proteins carbohydrates and fats which is required for growth and repair that is assimilation and the unabsorbed food that is then thrown out of the body in a process called as digestion we will be discussing digestion in detail followed by absorption digestion this takes place in a long tube called as the alimentary canal so it is a long hollow tube the alimentary canal it is ably assisted by the different glands present in the body which will help in the process of digestion the alimentary canal begins with the mouth and ends with the anus so the digestive system in human beings is complete it has two separate openings human beings consume a wide variety of food substances the three important nutrients present in most of these food items are proteins carbohydrates fats and lipids and some amount of roughage so these three nutrients how they are broken down that is what we will discuss so in the oral cavity when the food is taken inside the teeth they help in cutting 
and grinding the food so the large molecules are cut and ground this food is then mixed with the secretion of salivary glands called as saliva for example whenever you see any food item or think about the food item the mouth will start watering so that fluid is what is called as saliva that is secreted by the salivary gland this saliva contains an enzyme so it is called as salivary amylase this enzyme salivary amylase it will break down the carbohydrates present in the food not only that the saliva it has certain bacteriolytic enzymes that is they also neutralize any bacteria present in the food the third function is it will make the food moist because if the food is dry it will make it difficult for it to pass through the alimentary canal so these are the three functions of saliva one is it destroys the bacteria second is it will break down carbohydrate into sugars with the help of the enzyme salivary amylase this is very important also it will make the food moist and the tongue which is a muscular organ that will help in mixing the food with the saliva so mixing is the function of tongue from here food will then enter into the second part of the alimentary canal that is the esophagus now esophagus is also called as the food pipe in the esophagus the food is just moved forward no kind of digestion takes place in the esophagus so how is the food moved in the esophagus this takes place with the help of special kind of movements called as peristalsis or peristaltic movements the food is pushed along with the help of rhythmic contraction and relaxation the food the food pipe it will contract pushing the food forward and it will relax once again it will contract push food is pushed forward it will relax this kind of rhythmic contraction and relaxation movements are very important in moving the food in a regulated manner so that it also gives enough time for the food to be digested peristaltic movements take place throughout the alimentary canal in the esophagus in the stomach in the small intestine also in the large intestine that is how the food is moved along the alimentary canal so with the help of peristaltic movements food is coming down to the esophagus at the junction where the esophagus meets the stomach there is a muscle called as the sphincter muscle this muscle is responsible for opening and closing so if the sphincter muscle is open the food can then enter into the stomach so the sphincter will guard the entry and entry of food into the stomach so when sphincter muscle is open food will then enter into the next organ that is stomach the stomach is a j shaped hollow muscular organ it is made up of smooth muscles on the inside so these muscles will help the stomach to expand when food enters the stomach can expand the inside of the stomach wall 
the inner lining of the wall it is provided with what are known as gastric glands gastric glands they produce three important substances which help in digestion of food in the stomach gastric glands produce hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus the hydrochloric acid it has two important functions one it makes the food acidic number two hydrochloric acid also neutralizes any bacteria present in the food most importantly hydrochloric acid is required for the action of the enzyme pepsin the pepsin enzyme is functional only in an acidic medium the enzyme pepsin it will help in the digestion of proteins the large protein molecules are broken down into simpler molecules known as peptides with the help of the enzyme pepsin the function of mucus is to protect the inner lining of the stomach from the action of hydrochloric acid if the secretion of hydrochloric acid increases it can lead to what is known as acidity so thus in the stomach the main nutrient that is getting digested is protein digestion of protein takes place no doubt small amounts of carbohydrate and fats are also digested from here the food that is now acidic will enter into the next part of the alimentary canal that is small intestine the small intestine is actually the longest part of the alimentary canal it can be as long as 6 to 7 meters but it is highly coiled inside the alimentary canal the diameter is narrow therefore it is called as small the length of the small intestine it varies from a herbivorous animal to a carnivorous animal the carnivorous animals because they eat meat digestion can happen faster therefore the length of the small intestine is smaller whereas in the case of herbivorous animals the food that they eat it is rich in cellulose so it takes longer time to digest cellulose therefore herbivorous animals will have longer intestines the first part of the small intestine is a u shaped structure called as duodenum so this part of the small intestine it receives digestive juices from liver as well as from pancreas so digestion starts here itself let us discuss the functions of liver and pancreas liver produces a juice called as bile juice this is not directly taking part in digestion because it does not have any enzymes but bile juice is required for the process of digestion why number 1 the bile juice it makes the food alkaline not only that bile juice it contains certain bile salts which help in emulsification of fats emulsification is a process where the large fat molecules are broken down into small globules so what how will this help in digestion when the fat molecules are broken down into small globules the action of the enzymes will be much more efficient uh, bile juice it is stored in the gall bladder pancreas also secretes juices together they are called as pancreatic juice the pancreatic juice mainly contains 
three important enzymes trypsin lipase and amylase these pancreatic juices are also coming into the duodenum now for the action of the enzyme trypsin alkaline environment or basic environment is required so bile juice does that it will convert the food into uh, acidic food into alkaline it will also help in the action of the enzyme trypsin the enzyme trypsin it is involved in protein digestion it converts the proteins into smaller molecules called as peptides in the stomach we had pepsin it requires acidic environment pepsin is in the is produced by the pancreas it acts on the small intestine it requires basic environment both of them break the proteins into peptides the second enzyme is lipase like o means lipids or fats lipases they break down the fats into smaller molecules and also there are amylases in the mouth the amylase amylases are enzymes which convert or which break down the complex carbohydrate molecules therefore we can say that complete digestion of food takes place in the small intestine all the three important nutrients proteins fats and carbohydrates are broken down in the small intestine once pancreatic juices they break down the proteins fats and carbohydrates then intestine walls will produce its own juice called as intestinal juices which will ultimately act on these and convert the nutrients into the final products proteins are finally converted broken down into amino acids fats are broken down to give you fatty acids and glycerol these are the simplest molecules and carbohydrates are broken down carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugar molecules that is glucose therefore food is completely broken down so these are very simple and small molecules they can this can be easily absorbed by the cells that is the next process once digestion takes place absorption starts absorption mostly takes place in the small intestine in the end part of the small intestine now small intestine the inner walls they are provided with small finger like structures called as villi these finger like structures they increase the surface area because of which absorption becomes much more easier and faster so thus small intestine will help in absorption of the nutrients not only that small intestine this villi are richly supplied with blood vessels so these nutrients amino acids glycerol fatty acid glucose can be absorbed into these blood vessels from where this can be sent to different parts of the body to all the cells where these cells can use this to build new proteins new fats and new carbohydrate molecules in the process called as assimilation so the complete digestion and most of the absorption takes place in the small intestine from here the food then enters into the next part that is the large intestine the food from the small intestine enters into the large intestine the diameter is large therefore it is called as large intestine here no digestion takes place only absorption of water is taking place the food all the water is absorbed and second 
mucus is added to this foot so that the passage will be much more easy and it would be lubricated and the unabsorbed foot will then move on to the rectum where it is temporarily stored and then this unabsorbed food is thrown out of the anus in the process called as ejection the exit of unabsorbed food from the anus is controlled once again by the sphincter muscle these are the steps taking place in the process of digestion in human beings thank you